Joining me in this fight are two tireless champions for vaccine equity. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. <laughs> Thank you, Nomzamo. Hello and good evening, global citizens. Look at all of us here, 60,000 strong, together in New York City. Are we prepared to do what's necessary to end this pandemic? Hi, everybody. It is so good to be back here with all of you. Look, we know, <laughs> we know that it feels like this pandemic has been going on forever. We get it, it is a lot. And some people are just over it. But if everyone's over it, it's never going to be over. There's so much that we can do today, now, that can get us closer to ending this pandemic. And that's why we're all here. We're able to be here tonight because the most brilliant scientists, researchers, frontline workers, and selfless public health leaders have risked their lives to protect our global community. They are our humanitarian heroes. Since this pandemic began, we've been talking to the experts about how we can do our part. This week, we sat with independent growth health leaders to further understand how we get closer to vaccine equity and ending this health crisis. But we're battling more than the virus alone. This is a battle of misinformation, bureaucracy, lack of transparency, and lack of access. And above all, this is a human rights crisis. Every single person on this planet has a fundamental right to get this vaccine. That's the point, but that's not happening. And while in this country and many others, you can go almost anywhere and get vaccinated, billions of people around the world cannot. This year, the world's expected to produce enough doses to meet the target of vaccinating 70% of people in every single country, but it is wrong that so much of the vaccine supply has only gone to just 10 wealthy nations so far and not everyone else. It's just not okay. Guys, we have what we need to vaccinate the world, but the experts told us here's what's getting in the way. They said many countries are ready to produce vaccines at home, yet they aren't allowed to because ultra-wealthy pharmaceutical companies are not sharing the recipes to make them. These countries... <laughs> these countries have the means, the ability, and the workers to start manufacturing. All they are waiting for is the vaccine intellectual property to be waived and for the vaccine technology to be transferred over. And, and by the way, Many of these vaccines were publicly funded. They are your vaccines. You paid for them. And when we view this as a humanitarian crisis, which it is, control over a vaccine that can help save lives should not be solely in the hands of the fortunate few. The experts also told us that doses are being bought up and stockpiled by wealthy nations and sent later to developing countries, often when they're close to expiration and when it's already too late. Dose sharing commitments are so important and appreciated, but this cannot just be a charity operation. It's a fundamental human rights issue. 
And finally, in our conversations, these experts shared that how the vaccine is distributed and who it's distributed to should be left to independent international organizations who know exactly where the doses are most needed. Just think about the millions of vaccines that have been discarded this year. That's like throwing away life vests when those around you are drowning. So where does that leave us? My wife and I believe... <laughs> My wife and I believe that where you're born should not dictate your ability to survive. Especially when the treatments exist to keep you safe. So, global citizens, we ask you tonight, do you think we should start treating the access, access to the vaccine as basic human right? I don't think they heard you. Thank you. When we start making decisions through that lens, where every single person deserves equal access to the vaccine, then we can achieve what is needed together for all of us.